nothing update wise. Uh, injuries, same same stuff as, as yesterday. It's, uh, we'll see how the report looks. We're really sort of walking through today anyway, so it'll be. I think some of it might even be considered listed as an estimation, just because of the practice schedule. So, um, kind of stay tuned for that. But again, a bunch of guys will be resting, nursing, treating all the things that they got to do to try to get ready for Sunday. Um, that's really all I have to, uh, other than for updates, and I'll let you guys go ahead. You're the state of the year where uh, your Thursday padded practices are over? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, we will. We still put the pads on Thursday. Uh, I'll, like we did last Thursday at about the halfway point of practice, I took them off. Um, but we still got padded work available to us, and we'll use all of them. I think we have – I think we have one more week of official padded work. And then after next week, I think we only get three of the last seven weeks in pads um, per CBA rules. So we'll, we'll use all of them. Um, we'll, we'll use the pads as much as we can, as much as they allow us to, um, and, and keep pushing. But there's a balance, too, as well, just making sure that we're getting the padded work, but we're also not, uh, you know, we're not kind of grinding our guys down already more than they already are. So um, good balance. But, yeah, we'll still be in pads on Thursday differently the last couple weeks in terms of the pass rush, whether it's blitzing more or, or more games? It seems like there's been more pressure that you guys have. No, I think it's been a pretty solid mix. I mean, I think uh, we probably pressured an okay amount. I think we're still not a, we're not a heavy, heavy pressure team right now. Um, but yeah, we've, we've activated some, some pressures. Um, but I think those guys are doing a good job. They're doing a good job with the games uh, up front. Um, um, and then they're, they're winning one-on-one -on -one matchups when they get a chance. And we're doing a, we're doing a much better job of of affecting the quarterback, whether we're getting him down every time or not, but just putting pressure on the quarterback, making him move off the spot, um, affecting his his progressions, and, and hopefully making him throw the ball away. So uh, those guys have really done a nice job. According to PFF, anyway, you guys had like more than double the amount of pressures you've had any game this yeah. year. Yeah, we pressured more in this in this past game. Um, I think certainly in the second half, uh, there was more pressures. Um, some of that was was the the quarterback, you know, trying to keep him. Uh, keep more people in the rush lanes, but um, yeah, there was, a, there was an uptick this week certainly uh, versus what the last couple of weeks have been. It's had a lot of success the last couple of weeks himself. Have he done anything different, or just finally having some luck getting through? Um, I think he's. I think his 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 individual work on the side, um, some things he's focused on, similar to how Calvin, you know, has been putting some different uh, different work in. That part's paid off for him. Uh, he's and he's Arden always plays with a ton of energy. And a ton of effort and and, uh, and passion, and so that part, uh, I think you just you just see you see it starting to break through a bit for him. Um, he's winning his matchups when he's had chances to win, and that's that's what we need from him. He said that there's some different things he's doing with some outside coaches. Is that something he comes to you to discuss, or the players no. they have the freedom to go? Yeah, I mean, they have they have people that help them, and he may have somebody watching his tape, and here's a couple of things that I see. And it's always good to get outside eyes on some things. Um, I mean, it's not like they're here at practice with us or anything. But, um, yeah, guys guys have people they talk to and people they look that, that help them in various places. And uh, we do our best to work with, with all guys. You know, get veteran guys like Arden have been around. They, they have some things they like to do, and you try to work, uh, work with those guys as best you can. Um, doing some of the things they might like versus what the scheme requires. So uh, it's a give and take, and, and usually it's you find a nice way to work together on those things. What does the involvement look like, uh, the defensive game plan? It seems like Bernard has a lot of autonomy, but during the week, mm -hmm. what, what are you actually doing in regards to planning? Defensive yeah, he does have a lot of uh, autonomy. I, I trust that staff. They do a really good job. Um, I always check in with Denard you know, every day. Um, I pay attention to what they have in and, and the calls they have. And if he's got something I can help with, you know, if we're playing a system that might be similar, um, just perspective from my end. Um, but other than that, those guys do a great job. Um, it's a really sharp defensive staff. Got a lot of veteran coaches over there, too. So um, a lot of trust in what those guys put together every week. And um, uh, again, I have, I, I'm aware of what, what they do and how they do it and, and what the process is. But um, I'll let those guys go coach. How do you plan on dividing the practice reps this week with Will and Mason? Um, we'll get Will, uh, his, his reps should uptick, you know, we're trying to get him, get him back rolling and hopeful that, uh, that's, that's sooner than later here. And, um, he'll probably take a little bit more to, to keep, keep sharp. I think Mason still needs to, to be ready to play. Um, and he'll still take some reps, but I'd like to increase Will's workload this week. Certainly. Reports come in that you guys are going to add Mike Edwards to the roster. Will, he be, will that be done in time for him to be at practice today? And if so, what kind of role do you envision for him? I'm not totally sure where that's at at the moment. I know he's uh, at, that's uh, on its way. Um, I haven't had an update you know, since early this morning 
uh, where that would be where he's at in terms of the day and signing and physicals and all that stuff. So uh, hopeful that, yeah, he'd be out of practice today. I think that's that's a possibility. Um, but we'll see. You know, Again, I haven't had an update and been in meetings most of the morning. So um, we'll see. But, yeah, he'd be, he's a veteran safety. Um, that would kind of help out with some depth and, and have a chance to help us and contribute. Um, obviously, with Quandre's injury, uh, having another player back there was was important for us, and a, a good a good solid player came available, and then we found a way to uh, make that happen. Cheeto anywhere uh, near retirement? Um, yeah, he's he's probably getting close uh, to us opening his window. I'm not totally sure uh, when that will happen, um, but yeah, he is getting close. I think there's a I, I hesitate to give timelines, but uh, hopefully hopefully in the next you know, handful, two, two, three weeks, we can get his window opened up and, um, and see where he's at. He's, he's been here, he's rehabbing. Uh, so hopefully in a, in a pretty good spot at this point. So uh, looking forward to that. With the linebacker position, you know, Gibbons, he played 100% of the snaps, Baker, zero. Is yeah. that something you want to balance? I know you said he's playing well, mm-hmm. but is that something you want to balance out a little bit more? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, there's really no reason to, to balance with the way that Gibby's playing right now. Um, he's just done a really nice job and it's hard to take him take him out of the game uh, he settles down he does a good job communicating um, it's it's an important role in the defense and that part has been really positive uh, for Gibby um, and it's hard to it's hard to do anything less than than what he's been doing for us so uh, we'll still keep Jerome ready to roll and if there's a spot where he can help us you know in a, in a in a sub package or a third down package and those are some things we could keep looking at but uh, right now Gibby's just playing really good football Uh, special teams would be the biggest part. You know, he's got to be able to contribute there um, because right now that's where most those other linebackers are contributing is on the special teams between Gifford and James Williams. And uh, those guys are, are heavy contributors. And so he's got to – we're going to work him. He's going to keep getting some work there. He worked there quite a bit the last week or two. Um, but he's going to keep getting more work. And, uh, again, Otis as well. Those, those three guys are, are heavy special teams contributors. And so to take one of those guys off, he's got to be able to fill in that role. And um, that's basically his main focus right now is, is finding a way to get up so he can contribute. Um, on special teams and keep trying to find a role. But um, he'll get some work, and, and we're trying to get him to that point. What, what Legos has learned, maybe your gain from his, his time off? Perspective. Um, I think that's always a good thing. It's, uh, you know, he had, he had a chance to kind of sit and watch, listen. Um, that's never going to be a bad thing for him. Um, and hopefully, you know, took some of the things that maybe Mason did well or some of the ways Mason operated that uh, he liked and or felt like he could do something like that that would help him. Um, and then, and then, just a chance to step back and, and step out of the step out of the limelight for a second is is good for a, a breather, almost in a sense. And um, hopefully, there's a, a renewed perspective and um, of what you know what the offense can look like, how he can fit in it, um, some of the strengths that we can highlight for him, uh, which would be which would be exciting. So that part, um, the perspective is probably good, and and I think that it hopefully would will have helped. Spears is working to get back, but yep. Tony Pollard has clearly took a majority of, of the reps this season. And I know last year or last week didn't practice at all. How, mm-hmm. how do you kind of balance that, making sure he he is healthy but able to still be able to go out there and do majority of the work on the field on Sunday? Are you talking about Tony or Tajay? Tony. Tony. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, look, he, he might not ever have to practice again at this point. Um, you, go, <laughs> you, go out and play like, you go out and play like that. Uh, you, you kind of earn the earn the the right in a sense, but yeah, we're gonna have to be mindful. I mean, you know, running backs in this league take a pretty good beating every Sunday, and um, especially guys that carry it 28 times, and uh, that, that's a that's a heavy workload. And and he's up to the task, which is fantastic. But we have to manage that. Um, there's a there's a practice load management. I mean, if he, he might not practice a lot this week, you know, just to just to keep him as fresh as we can for as long as we can, we have to be uh, a bit creative because our bye was, you know, over a month ago now, and and there's no there's none coming, and we have no short weeks, we have no weekend breaks. I mean, we're just sort of in it uh, in the kind of week to week grind, Sunday to Sunday, and without much of a reprieve. And so we got to be creative in how uh, we manage guys and we manage practice so we can make sure we're as healthy as uh, we can be on Sundays and then healthy for the rest of the season as best we can. So um, it's a challenge in that regard, but having guys like Tony does make it a bit easier when they can rest all week and come and play on Sunday. Uh, is getting closer, what has he maybe done while he's been yeah. all? Yeah, I think he's getting closer. Um, hopefully get a, you know, a little more uh, active in, in the rehab process right now. And um, we'll see where he's at this week. Um, I'm not necessarily going to rule him out yet this week. I think there's, you know, we'll see where he where he progresses to, and then uh, hopefully sooner than later. Yeah. What about Reigns? Is that what are his chances of coming back so that you can figure out him, but also solidify the center's status? Yeah, I think he's got a good shot. 
um, again, I won't, I won't comment too much. I've been, I've gotten stuck a few times saying I'm hopeful a guy plays and he doesn't, but, um, I think that, uh, I think that he's, he's progressing and, and, um, he's, he's got a chance. So again, won't, won't rule him out at any stretch yet either. You hadn't played a lot of center in recent years, but you happen to work with him throughout camp. How much do you think that time maybe helped prepare him if he has to step in now? Uh, yeah, but really beneficial. You know, it's anytime you're a backup interior lineman, there's value if you can snap and, and play center. And that's going to be uh, a, something we always have to be building. You know, you always have to be building a backup center, a third center, guys that can kind of swing all through the three interior um, because still you only get eight up on game day and someone's got to be able to snap. And so you got a tackle and a guard. And now at least with eight, you get a center. But for the most part, it used to be just seven and you'd have to have a guy that could swing all three. Um, but we're always going to cross train the guards at center. Um, even if they never play in the game, they'll, they'll practice it, they'll snap. Um, so that's a process we're always working. Uh, and and Danny's been doing a nice job of, of taking to that and taking ownership of it. Seem to be building some momentum right now. How mm -hmm. huge is uh, Justin Herbert in, uh, as a part of that with the offense there? Um, yeah, he's he's a he's one of the premier quarterbacks in our league. I mean, he's he's produced as such. He's paid as such. He's he's a fantastic player. Um, really, really enjoy watching him play the position. Um, enjoy the the talent that he has. Um, and we got to do a good job of of making sure we can keep his explosives sort of bottled up. He's really good at getting the ball down the field. Uh, he's a good athlete. He's a good runner. Um, he's a really, you know fantastic quarterback there's really no other way to put it um, so we got to work cut out for us there and, and he's a huge reason why that team is is in the position they're in is because they're playing good defense and and they have him at quarterback with their running back Dobbins how much does he help complement that offense and also uh, help Herbert be able to do what he does yeah you see you see that offense uh, it's got the Jim Harbaugh Greg Roman fingerprints sort of all over it um Really good rushing attack. J.K. obviously a lot of familiarity with his time in Baltimore. Um, see, played against him before. I mean, he's a really. Outside, I mean, he's had some unfortunate injuries, but um, when he's been healthy, he's been a really productive back. And so far this year, obviously, he's um, you know humming pretty good at this point. And and he fits the scheme. And they they do a really good job in a run game. It's really multiple. Um, they do a good job moving line of scrimmage. It's 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 a challenge. Uh, it's really it's a big challenge. And uh, but you see the fingerprints of, of what they want to be offensively. Um, and you you know if you watch Baltimore at any point for a long time, it's some similarities there. So um, they do a really good job. What you guys see of, of Elijah Molden? I guess here in, in sort of limited time. And mm -hmm. Have you seen anything different when you're when you're watching? No, I see I see the same guy. I mean Elijah is uh, he's in position. He's made some plays on the ball. He's a smart football player. Um, he's he's a good addition to their safety room. You know he plays his role there, and uh, and has played it well for him. You know he's he's all the same things that we saw here. I mean he's got ability to be a um, a good starting safety, a good rotational safety. You know he's he's got some packages they work in, um, but he's he's done a nice job. He's where he's supposed to be. He's he's made plays. Um, really a nice probably fit for their defense. Again, very similar scheme to what we run. You know, a new staff and all, but the Chargers have four or five guys who were here over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Are there people in the building you can kind of get intel from still on their tendencies and all that sort of thing, or do you even go down that path? No, I probably don't go down that path. Just sort of look at what you see on tape and, uh, you know, what guys' histories are and where they come from and things that maybe they believe in. And uh, But for the most part, you know, they it's, it's a lot of new, and, and those guys – you know, they're just like us. They're they're half a season in into what they do, and um, you just sort of trust your eyes and trust the tape and, and get ready to go play. There's not a whole lot that you can maybe glean back and forth. Maybe something minor, but not a lot. My back is poor, <coughs> but you might have been six the last time this franchise won against the Chargers in Southern California. Nice. It's not that many games. <laughs> right. So, but it's been a while. When you see something like that, that for a franchise through so many different regimes and all of that like uh, how do you give it any weight any meaning um you know there's probably something to it if it's been that long uh but it's hard to it's hard to cross years and teams and um you know i think for a long time the, the chargers you know philip rivers and um, they've had some pretty good football teams down there had been in that division for a long time They're, they were tough to play against um but yeah it's hard to take much from that, um, other than just the historical perspective, but uh, there maybe there's something to the to the travel out there and what that looks like. So, again, I, I don't know the specifics of it, but we'll we'll keep our routine and we'll do it our way, and uh, hopefully hopefully they'll we'll find a way to win one that uh, it's been the first time in a long time apparently. Have you, have you 
you ever been a part of teams that have gone West Coast Friday? Um, mm -hmm. and What's I've been more of? more a part of more a part of uh, West Coast teams traveling east going on Fridays. That's generally more when you see it. Um, you know, we traveled last year when I was in Cincinnati. We went from we went out and played a, a one o'clock kickoff in San Francisco or a, a four o'clock kickoff out there, but one o'clock kickoff for us. And um, you know, we made a minor tweak or two, but we still left on our normal time on Saturday, and uh, we adjusted maybe the evening schedule because it's just a little bit later, uh, let guys get to bed. But other than that, uh, didn't do a whole lot different. But not not as many two day trips from the east going west as opposed to the opposite. When you face a team that's just so I guess explicitly built to beat mm -hmm. you in the trenches like this. Mm -hmm. Do you is the philosophy to just get up and try to match them in that way, or are you countering? Are you even trying to to play their game, or are you trying to play a, a different game to counter that? Does that make sense? It does. Are you talking about just on both sides of the ball? I guess explicitly with their offensive line, but yeah. yes, on both sides of the ball. Um, yeah, you you have to you have to you know they 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 are a they're they're a really good run game. They're they're well coached. They're well schemed. Um, they do a really good job. Uh, if you if you give them too many easy looks, they're gonna find the, they're gonna find the soft spot and they're gonna find the weakness uh, in that in that scheme. So you got to make sure you give them you know plenty of things to look at, uh, plenty of different ways you can stop the run in this league. Um, sometimes you got to go play with a four-man front. Sometimes you can play with a five-man front. Sometimes you pressure. Um, those are all things that you have to make sure you mix in enough um, so they can't necessarily get a, a, a great feel for what you're doing and how you're doing it so you can at least disrupt some timing. But uh, it's a really it's a good challenge for us. This is a good rushing football team. I think that these two teams are the two slowest tempo offenses in the NFL this year. When, when a game figures to be kind of slow, were there any extra considerations that you have to put in about opportunities yeah absolutely I mean you know when your possessions are going to be limited you know it's just like when we played Baltimore when I was in Cincinnati for all those years um, you know you know you're you're going to be in the in the seven to eight possessions potentially um, and that's not a lot you know we've definitely had games where you come out of it and you've had three possessions in the first half so um, you, you can't you have to treat those with the respect they deserve and you know that you might not uh, be able to get the normal 10 or 11 or 12 uh, possessions and you have to make them count so you have to there's a heightened awareness to know that when you have possessions you got to make them count and they have, you have to do something with them um, because yeah they're it's we're sort of built similarly in that regard and we play a similar style like that uh, currently and um, yeah I mean what there was what two possessions in the New England game in the third quarter you know what I mean like that's just uh, that's just how things go and teams that can run the ball well as they can bleed the clock as well and they've gotten the leads early in games and then they've sat on it and they've, they've grounded out pretty good and you know, you just you just know what you're in for when it comes to the possessions. The you have made on offense the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. just the first half of a couple of games, and then last week. Yeah. How do you conceivably plug Will into that and expect to kind of pick up where you are? Yeah. As opposed to kind of reverting to where he was. Yeah, I think um, a lot of the things that we're doing and how we're doing them, um, we don't have a lot of things that are necessarily new. So these are things that are. Um, the best way to say this, there are things that the rest of the offense has has really improved upon schematically. Um, you know, just the the timing of the passing game, the route running, where guys are supposed to be uh, in the run game, how we formation, how we manage it. Um, all of those things are really uh, our offense has played better because all of that's gotten better as well. Um, and so I, the hope and and is that Will steps into an improved unit in general from when he was last in the lineup. And I think that's going to go a long way. And then Will's got to do his part, you know, if he steps in and um, he's got to be able to complete the ball and, and do a nice job of managing it and protect it. Um, and those things will help us. But I think that the, to me, what's more uh, part of that equation is the improvement we made sort of everywhere else uh, in, in, the, in the scope of the offense that, um, you know, hopefully he steps into a unit that's a little bit uh, better, better oiled and executing at a higher level than it was before. Expectation will for Will too, though, with Mason kind of unlocked uh, Calvin Ridley's box, you mm -hmm. know, in, in yeah. an interesting way to say it. But do you feel like he can learn some things from that preparation during the week to mm -hmm. carry on that connection with Will? Yeah, I think it's just now it's just going to be about them getting getting some reps back. You know, he's had some over the last two weeks, but um, getting that that feel back. You know, so there's a, a rapport that those two that Mason and, and Calvin have built, and that was really positive. And again, I think more of it's just Calvin's understanding of where he's supposed to be, when he's supposed to be there. Those things have all improved a great amount, um, and so now Will's got to do his part in, in getting back on this, on that on that page. And um, again, it's the it's the discipline and. Uh, spacing in the passing game, I think that's really been improved, and and then now he's just got to be able to step into it and, and deliver it. So um, that'll take some work this week, and and hopefully the result uh, is is very similar.